scripted And this isn't scripted I wanna equip you And use you against my enemies, yeah You see, I wanted to save you And then learn how to raise you But I forget you from the wilderness Oh, hello there. What is up, everyone? I am Rob. I'm Eamon. This is Monster Fuzz. Eamon, today we have a fun one. Uh, we do. Uh, Cryptids, inspired, we inspired by the lovely Emma. Yeah, at, yeah. Uh, Real Ghost Stories. Um, uh-huh. This is the Van Meter Monster or the Van Meter Visitor. Bit of a sort of a cryptid, would you say? Kind of like... Yeah. This guy's a cryptid. Uh, he's got... A few elements that go into the more metaphysical. Oh, uh, love that. You know yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's basically like he's a Final Fantasy VII boss. What more could you want? His dragon that shines light from his horn. What more could you want? And we've all done it. <laughs> <laughs> so happens to the best of us. Yeah, folks. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Hope you. Um, let's say, what am I hoping that they're doing? Um, uh, I hope they're just having a wonderful day. Hope their pockets are full. They're they're, they're feeling wealthy. They're about yeah. to buy something good. If yeah. they're doing the lotto, they're going to win it. They're in the height of their health. Yeah, uh, the height all, of their health. All the scans came back negative, which is positive. <laughs> that <laughs> is know? a positive, it's positive thing. thing. Yeah. So, hope you're all doing well, folks. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like. You can drop a comment. You can subscribe. You can hit that bell notification. That's cool. appreciated. Cool. If you're listening on audio only, you're one of the OGs. Leave a review on whatever platform you're on, or. Um, yeah, head on over to Patreon, drop some support. Helps us with these episodes. You'll get your ad-free episodes out of it. You will get an exclusive episode once per month, which YouTube does not get, by the way. Um, and you'll get exclusive discounts from ours, all of that kind of stuff. I have actually a new T-shirt planned. Oh, yeah? And that will be coming kind of soon. I, I don't want to spoil it, but it's quite a cool one. Spoil. I think people will dig it. And, yeah, you can sign up for the year there if you want as well, folks. If you don't like that monthly subscription, Lord knows... Not many of us oh, do. it can be hard. You have them YouTube premiums putting up their premium. You have your Disney's putting up their Disney's. Everyone's trying to charge more out of you. It's very cheesy. Is Netflix are putting up their Netflix. Yeah, up? they are. Netflix yeah. has gone cheeky as well. They do. A, I noticed the thing that, because I have Netflix, but Paula is a, you know, the, the other. Brother, yeah. But when she tries to look at something, the resolution can be dog. And then as ah. soon as I look at it, the resolution is crisp. And oh, right. It's just, you know, it's attractive to you. You know? um, the account holder you know? yeah <laughs> uh yeah folks uh if they have a cryptid encounter maybe they've mm. come across the van meter dude what should they yeah. do have you seen a dragon wow <laughs> write in and tell us about it monsterfuzz podcast at gmail.com we will as always read out your stories on yeah, a mini fuzz yeah. which yeah. is the thursday special edition is. of this wondrous podcast on the mini fuzz Emin, we talk about anything Mini fuzz is just hip fuzz, Anything as in goes. shoot from. Uh, to be fair, it is always generally spooky, but we do. We'll talk about our own lives. Anything goes on the mini, you know. That's talk about that was our damaged psyche. <laughs> <laughs> that was why it was, you know, it was conceived. Yeah. It was, it was for that purpose. Um, yeah, so we've got the Van Meter Visitor. Very interesting. I'd never mm. heard of it, actually, when Emma schooled me. No, on, no, on, I, like, I don't think I had either. What is this uh, knowledge? That she is carrying. And when I was like, because you know yourself, sometimes what can be really difficult about trying to do an episode is we usually aim for six to seven page of notes. Sometimes yeah, yeah, it goes yeah. way more than yeah. that. Generally, it won't go any yeah, less, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and when I was first looking, I was like, God damn, like I, I, can I find enough stuff about this? Yeah. Can I find the actual accounts? Yeah. Um, but thankfully, yeah. chat GPT has been upgraded uh, and you can actually ask for specific accounts and it'll give you the um the reference from where they've come from okay so, right because it doesn't always write it as well as it could or mm-hmm. should but um it's definitely a, a handy tool for research yeah for pulling things out and stuff like that um yep yeah, yep yeah. so if you want to give people a little bit of an intro i mean um, what the story is herbert 117 years ago according to chat gpt <laughs> a strange creature was said to have paid a visit to a small town uh, the town was called Van Meter, and it was in Iowa, Shucks where so. Slipknot are from. Of course, that's where not. Were they one of the dragons? I wouldn't have known it otherwise, Emma. I have no I idea. I actually wouldn't have no. either. Great album. Um, mm. what, was, what one was on Iowa? Was that the Fingers and the Eyes one? Duality? No, no that was, um, Iowa was... Um, Spit It Out was the first album, which was called Slipknot. 
I was um, down, down, down. Uh, what's the one? Left Behind, uh, oh. My Plague, yeah. um, uh, Heretic Anthem. We all got left behind. Yeah. Offered it all slipping away. Classic album. Very mm. good album, actually. Uh, young Boy Learns to Be a Butcher, I believe. It was does, the, uh, that was the video for yeah, that. It's a classic. Yeah. They, they, to be fair, Slipknot made me a bit uneasy because they have very kind of... Angry. Halloween 2000s vibes from them. From they the were... Videos. The were guilty pleasure of mine as a young fella, to be honest. When I first yeah. got into him, I don't think I told people I was listening to him because I was like, ah. But, uh, no, I stuck with him. I persevered and I enjoyed. I listened to a lot of Iowa. I bought that back in the day. Um, yeah, it's a great album. Still yeah. a great album. It's actually one I'd buy they on record. bangers, like. Yeah, yeah. Bro, they have bangers or something. Oh, yeah, so man. Yeah. They've enjoyed. They know how to write a tune, you know. Um, so, these strange events happened years before Slipknot were even conceived. Uh, both physically fuck? and figuratively. Yeah. The strange events occurred in October in 1903. Several respected members of the community were told of, a, or sorry, they told of mysterious winged creatures that terrorized some of the town's residents during several nights in the course of the week. Oh. Uh, descriptions of the beast suggested that it had large bat like wings, it left a terrible stench wherever it went, and even stranger. Strangest, it fired beams of bright light from its forehead. Proton cannon, <laughs> unibeam, <laughs> unibeam. Yeah. Uh, it actually does very much have like Japanese Godzilla vibes, Class. like a smaller version because Godzilla comes in, like trashes the town. But it's this Jersey Devil is almost, is it? A little bit Jersey Devil, but yeah. more no hoofs, no, no hoofs to speak of. Hmm. Um, was not born of woman. Uh, nor was That's Mac true, Duff, yeah. he was untimely ripped from the womb. It's been a long time since I read the Jersey Devil notes, but... That was, was that one? Yeah, that was your notes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Jersey I don't Devil remember that about it, fair play. I yeah. remember everything. Iron trap of a mind. Well done. Drizzled in whiskey and wine. <laughs> Iron trap of a mind. <laughs> I'm a poet. A plum. And I don't. <laughs> a plum sitting in alcohol. <laughs> cognac. Yeah. That's it. The bailet of my brain <laughs> containing the alcohol. That could drive any normal man to madness. I'm gonna have to put out like a call to arms on her on her Instagram and do a poll on whether our listeners think you need intervention. The I'll, only I'll, I'll intervention the, that I should have is a glass of cognac while I do these stupid episodes I'll about the, monsters. And if they say, "Yeah, I'm gonna tie you up sometime," no, yeah, just, you're drinking too much. Like I'm only drinking bottles of wine on the weekend. Like shut up, shut up. In any other country, you have a problem. Yeah, but I don't live in any other fucking country, do That's I? Why I, live I live here. in this country. Yeah, I gotta put it out there, uh, listeners. <laughs> if you've ever liked me, you will you will respond to the negatively. For this. Does Eamon have a problem? No. Eamon only has solutions. He does, yeah. No, he There's does. a great meme. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, Paula sent to me. But it was like, why I married a Brazilian woman. All right. No, I wouldn't have seen that. And it's that, this no. like tribal leader. And he just goes... The whole thing is... They're goes, very tailored memes. I don't... Yeah, there's... Oi! Uh, yeah. He goes... Uh, I don't want peace. I want problems always. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, that's why you marry a Brazilian. Um, oh, you. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, she's a very easy person to live with. She's a lovely lady. She said, the fact that she could send such a meme uh, speaks oh, to the goodness of her character <laughs> and her chilled out nature in general. Absolutely. Very whimsical. Um, Self-deprecating, one might say as well. Oh, sure. She's oh, yeah. a hoot. She's a hoot. Quiet riot. <laughs> Uh, so the bizarre account recalls how several of the locals actually, in a very American, Iowan way, mm. attempted to shoot the beast. Nice. Now, uh, their gunfire, unlike massive school shootings, didn't have oh, any effect. Oh, shit. Um, fed up with the menace, a group of townsfolk banded together one evening and pursued the creature to an abandoned coal mine. Now, some reports say that they found not one but two of the beasts there. Mm -hmm. Did they have biblical knowledge of each other? One can only surmise. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. so anyway, the mine, uh, they say they disappeared and all that sort of stuff. They weren't seen again and they aren't entirely sure if they were able to like phase out, you know? 
I reckon what happened is there's some kind of um, creature that is com- comes from the, the Earth's crust. Mm. Um, they're a fire dragon of fire, types. Fire dragon. Yeah, and they came up from... The aptly named <laughs> fire dragon. <laughs> the Charizard. And they came up through the Earth's crust into mm. the mine shaft, which would have been a, a quite an accessible point. Uh, if any of my video game experience tells me anything, that there yeah, is lava is usually around. You mines. never fight a fire dragon if there's not lava. There's usually like escape lava of molten nearby. around the mine somewhere. Yeah. I reckon he came out with lava, mm. uh, or or maybe it was a she or a they. They came out with lava. They, yeah, they went into the village and fucked everyone up just because they were a bit annoyed that the miners broke into their could be, mantle could be, crust. Yeah. Do yeah. you know what kind of music do you think that the dragon would have? Because it has to be some kind of like metally. We are got left behind. I feel it all slipping. <laughs> oh, I'm a dragon. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Pretty good. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I'd say that's what it was. So we're going to find out a little bit about Van Meter here and its crack. So it's mm. a city in Dallas, uh, Dallas County, Iowa. Um, and it's along the Raccoon River, oh, Raccoon City. I knew I when I saw Raccoon River, I was like, that's one of us will make a Resident Evil reference here. Shouts out Raccoon um, River. Yeah, I'd like to do another episode. I'd like to just do a whole podcast on just Resident <laughs> Evil games. We'll just do a video game podcast, then. Mm, video game good. follows. The, oh, someone's going to rob that. The population and 1,484 at the time of the 2020 census, Van Meter was laid out as a town in 1869. The city was named for Jacob Rhodes Van Meter and his family, Dutch settlers from Metterin or Meterin, the Netherlands. Maybe his name is Van Metter. Would it Van be? Meter. Meterin? Could be me- Meterin? Meterin? Yeah. Van Meter Meter was incorporated on December 29th, 1877. So a very small group of people. The town had less than 500 residents before 1970 and would have had a population somewhere in the region of 400 at the times of the sightings. 400 people, small place. It's a small place. And again, you're talking kind of... Not it's kind of just tale of the Wild West. Mm. You're 16 years before the Great Depression, mm-hmm. um, and then the late 1800s is kind of the and earlier mm. is the Wild West, right? So you're kind mm. of people. There's settlers, and you're just sort of. I guess you still have that Wild West energy. So I mean, this almost could have been like a little saloon town where mm. there's not a whole lot. Well, obviously, with 400 people, there wouldn't be much going on there. No. But that was much more common back then, right? Like they just Smaller. had small settlements. Yeah. In in the early 1900s. Is that fair to say or is that wrong to say? You'd wonder if it was easier to get jobs and all back then or like easier to make a few bob. It's probably hard fucking time. I'd say so making money was really tough back you're then. You're probably just working for your spot to sleep. and. Well, I'd say there's maybe. a lot of probably hunting and being self-sufficient yeah. is a big thing. Um, because in a town of 400 people. Sure, you are working in the mines though. You can't hunt, son. No time for hunting in the mines. Well, that's true, yeah. But I mean, would you have... Someone, would someone else would yeah. your kids, but then again, the kids got to work fairly early. Sure, yeah. the kids probably handy. We're for working mines. at seven. Mm. In the mines at seven. That's some bad, isn't it? The mine age. Like my niece is nearly six now. <laughs> She'd be crap mines. at work. Like. She's nice and small. She get into the mines, into the cracks, and all that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We were playing hide and seek on Sunday. It took, it took her way too long to Did find it? me. I was like, "Time is money, Alana. Yeah, <laughs> Let's on. go." Uh, um, yeah, it's mad the way, like, marriage and family kind of the way it was seen back then and the mm-hmm. way it's seen now culturally where like now you know marriage is is about love and companionship whereas sometimes it's about green cards <laughs> and money but this is what it is um speaking from experience <laughs> uh, we don't have green cards in ireland no. that's not real uh but like the that now you know you choose your partner blah yeah. blah whereas marriage is were more about alliances, mm. maybe not for the poorer people, but certainly for the no- yeah, yeah. nobility Made and all that. Or whatever. And then children, you had as many children as you could, no matter how much money you made, because it was like a, a symbiotic kind of a thing where they gave back, they raised the other kids, they had to go out to work. I find um, a cute old fucker now in in Van Meter, and I have a daughter. She's coming of age and all that. Straight to the brothel. No, I'm looking. I'm looking around at the at the other families, and mm. I'm seeing like, is there some young fucker there now just chopping up a lot of trees? Can you imagine bringing back at the bison? No one, all that shit. But knowing what you know now, if you went back then, like if I had a daughter, like, I'd be running rings around. The I'd be like, right, here's the thing. Lads love big arses, oh, right? Yeah. You start doing. I'd be having her doing squats, and she's thirty. Oh yeah, right. And like so, like she'd have saying. her pick. 
Not for me, that's disgusting yeah, and awful. Yeah. But she'd have her pick of like any lad she wanted because she'd have like she'd have a twenty first century body <laughs> in the eighteen hundreds. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. But if she had a bad head, then it doesn't, you know. My daughter. Bad <laughs> <head>. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. <laughs> um, no, it's true. You never know, man. That's true. She could come out like like some of the. I mean, like you would think, for Look, example, if you have a banging you body, example. you get away with a bit of a bad head. Yeah. You yeah, know? that's true. And the no, lads back. Like, you just listen. You just find out a decent old fella. Sure, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be. It's not about looks back then. I mean, it's about practicality. Looks is not important to the lads, though. No, no, no. It's not because the lads. What the lads want back then is a good old dinner. Sure, they're only getting the old dingleberry ride once a fucking week or something. Do you know what I mean? Like that. There's, there's I think back then. They're not. It's I not, think back then, like uh, it's not like it is now. Like they're sounds. not eating ass and all that. Like. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, but I'd say they'd be interested in the body of a 21st century. Or would they be massively off put? Like, imagine Pamela they were like Anderson. oversexed. I don't think they were oversexed back then. I think they were just like, get the job done. That's nice. There's, off about there's business. fuck all to do. Back yeah, then, just though. a quick. Yeah, but. Uh, do, but um, imagine you're in the Wild West, right? In the Wild West, everyone's doing Wild West. I reckon West we're things. more dirty now than the Wild West. I think we would make cowboys blush with our I'm average sure, carry on. I'm sure we probably would. <laughs> but what I mean is that. Imagine, like, you have all the people that are around there. And this can go male or female. Yeah. So imagine you're in the Wild West and then, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger walk. And everyone would be like, look at the size of this lad yeah. and the muscles on him. Or imagine, like, Nicki Minaj or yeah. Megan Three Stones. No, I get you. I get you. Know point, but I, I think I, I, I think that wouldn't be... I think what's more important is, can they muck out the pigs? Can they make me a nice dinner? Can they... Have they got good childbearing hips? Are they from good But if stock? you have the choice of a woman with a class dumper, of course, yeah, of course, you know I mean? sure, of course. Do you know, you know what it is like to be a man in this terrible shell, <laughs> where the ghoulish insides lust over big arses. I just, I think what I'm trying to say is, I think priorities were different then. No, of course, I uh, think so. But I also, might be wrong. I also don't think it's a great idea to make your daughter do squats. You do it all. <laughs> so she can attract the per- the perfect not. suitor. Yeah, you do it all. Uh, I will say things on this podcast that even yeah. I don't agree <laughs> with, ladies and gentlemen. But no, you're right, dog. So she's your child. There's a fifty fifty. She has. No she arse. won't have. Well, 50/50. she might have a normal size arse because my yeah. like Paula has the Brazilian, the big uh, wonder. Uh. I have like goes the wrong way so like <laughs> you know good. between the two of us yeah my arse is like my arse hides from you actively my arse is like metaphysical bigfoot your arse there's a rumor your arse in your pants mm. but my pants don't know about no. it my pants are like, quite talking about i've never seen that i've never seen that what are you talking about <laughs> yeah roger no all the weight went to the front part the first <laughs> sighting was in bedford iowa on a hot summer day august 11th mm. lee corder a local banker at the time, oh, yeah. and his sighting added credibility to the story because he was a member of the community. He had and money, he was so he was respected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he married someone with a big bang and body. Did, yeah. According to his account, one night while he was in his office, he noticed the creature through the window. He described it as a large humanoid figure with bat-like wings and a blinding light that seemed to emanate from its forehead. Startled, he allegedly grabbed a gun and tried <laughs> to shoot at it. Class. Yeah, just classic American. Mm. A classic uh, 19th century hubris, <laughs> but it seemed unfazed and quickly disappeared. Dr. Peter Dunn was another prominent figure and a key eyewitness involved in the sightings of the Van Meter monster during the mysterious events in Van Meter, Iowa in 1903. Dr. Dunn was the town's local physician, which made his account particularly significant as he was regarded as a trustworthy and educated member of the community. True, yeah, yeah, you know? true. So there you go. Did his leave, sorry. Um, yeah, this no, is it, uh, he, the Dacta. Yeah. According to his story, Dr. Dunn first encountered the creature one night after hearing strange noises outside his office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was it. <laughs> MP3. Stuff like that. Uh. Curious, he went to investigate and was confronted by a bizarre sight. A large bat-like creature with enormous wings and a horn on its head that emitted intense beams of light. That's mad. Like other eyewitnesses, Dr. Dunn described being startled and frightened by the sheer size of the creature and its supernatural appearance. Mm. And also, he tried to shoot at it. Yeah, of course. So, classic. Uh, again, his efforts are in vain. The bullets uh, seem to have no effect on the creature whatsoever. So this adds kind of an air of invincibility and mystery. And again, we're talking... Now, if you are a dragon mm. and you're shooting something with a gun from the early... Mm. 20th century mm-hmm. 
is that going to do much damage? No. Do you know, if you have a, a 22, you're probably not going to kill a big animal with a 22. I don't think they were showing 22s back then. Though. No, but I just mean even like, for, like, reference no. nowadays, you know? Yeah, true, true, true. I don't know what the fuck they were showing back then. They probably had some blunderbuss type shit. Mm. You know? A widespread. <laughs> blunderbuss style beast. Just putting the... Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, look, whatever this is, though, it sounds like it's um, not... You're not going to be affected by anything. I mean... I'm trying to think when you were describing it there, I was like trying to rationally go, what could it, what be? Could it be? Like, uh, is there something that, you know, like how a mothman, you're like, oh, maybe it's an owl, maybe it's a shrike mm. hawk or something like that. But like, some with light coming out of his head, I'm like, what the fuck could yeah, that be? There's no animal that's. Unless it's like, it's light. yeah, unless you're talking about some kind of like fire breathing creature, maybe they could misconstrue that as light, but probably not though, right? Because uh, they're not fucking fire. But is. again, if it's a fire breathing creature, it's all yeah. like least stepped into that, that not, not a creature we know about territory you know yeah um pretty cool i wonder if it opens its mouth and the light no but it's saying it's specifically coming from the horn mm. um interesting the horn of light time traveling dragon you think it's possible you know some kind of technological thing yeah they're, they're just saying there and that was your last bit there, i think where they just went to the edge of, edge of town chased it down they followed it down yeah and it was last seen um so very interesting. Um, they're asking like what happened to the coal mine. So on the final night of the shitings, the creature was seen again. This time, the final night. So there was multiple nights, right? Mm -hmm. That I missed that part. So these are the so there's there's several nights when this is happening, but there's like the only two really decent renditions of the story are Doctor Don and Lee. Okay, uh, Lee Corder. Right. So. The creature was seen again on the final night, this time moving toward an abandoned coal mine on the outskirts of Van Meter. Some reports suggest that multiple creatures might have been involved as residents reported seeing what appeared to be two monsters that headed toward the mine together. The armed posse of townsmen led by prominent figures like Dunn and Corder followed the creatures to the mine. The group believed the creatures had taken refuge there, which added to the mystery, as the coal mine had been long deserted. The townspeople, determined to end the creatures' reign of terror, took their guns and prepared to corner it inside the mine. Smart move. As the townspeople approached the entrance of the mine, they allegedly heard strange sounds, shrill screeches or an eerie noise coming from within. The monsters were said to be making their way deeper into the mine, but what startled the posse most was this blinding light that appeared to emanate from the creature's glowing horns, just as was described in previous sightings. So some versions of the story claim that people saw the creatures disappearing into the mine's depths, their glow fading as they moved further inside. Which is a pretty cool visual. It is. Yeah. Very cool. Realising the danger and unable to effectively harm the creatures with gunfire, the townspeople came up with a plan. They sealed the entrance to the mine, hoping to trap the creatures inside and prevent them from returning to the town. There was no immediate evidence of the creatures' death, but the entrance was closed off, and there were never any more sightings of the Van Meter monster as a result. Um, you know, would you... I'm kind of imagine, or imagining, did you ever see the death clause out of Fallout? You ever see a death claw? No, I don't think so. You should Google a death claw there. Death claw. Yeah, death claw. Yeah. They meant like a death clause where a lawyer comes in and he's like, aha. No, no. It's like Santa Claus is evil. Fucking death twin claws. death claws. No, no. A death claw. I imagine something like a death claw with wings and light coming from its shits. <clears throat> That's what I'm imagining. Death claw. I am yeah. entering the images yeah. of death. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm thinking like that with like lights coming out of his horns. That'd be pretty dumb, and, right? And wings, yeah. That'd be pretty, pretty Scary. unsettling. I'm, yeah, I mean, so what do you reckon? Like, what do you reckon that that is there? Um, I mean, it's like anything, right? Potentially there was something. Or was there must in, have been something. By the way, was this in like newspapers, printed shit at the time? I couldn't find you couldn't printed find, like, stuff actual about it. Yeah. Stuff. So it's it seems like it's more of an oral tradition. Right. Um, there's There wasn't a whole lot on it. Even when you get into like the cryptid forums, most of the stuff is just, it's a very... Um, Folkloric. Like, well, just a surface level kind of, oh, yeah, these lads saw it. There are some other sightings from 2005 yeah. and 2010, I think, as well. 
So it's a couple but of it's like a hundred years since. Oh. So it's like 1903, I guess. It gets ah. trapped in the mine. Uh, and then there's no sightings for the bones of a hundred years. Oh. And then there's a few more sightings, which so, may be other things as well. So there's Bigfoot sightings that in a vacuum would be like this, where it's like, mm. here's this one thing that happened and it was really strange. Like there's one of the like kind of California rock ape kind of ones where just that story. Remember the guys get like pelted by rocks that mm. were like working. It was the same kind of thing. They were like yeah, yeah, cowboys yeah. or they were like up working in the There's mountains. the cowboy who got kidnapped. There was that guy's sleeping well. bag yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there was a bunch of guys that got, and it was in the papers at the time mm. where it was like, you know, they're like Bigfoot type creatures were like pegging rocks at them and stuff like that. Yeah. And they had to run off. And that was like, so in a vacuum, if you didn't have any other Bigfoot stuff to kind of go off of, it would be a lot like this, where it's like, yeah, here's this one incident. There might be one or two scraps of paper with a bit of stuff about it. That's your lot. Mm. And it's like with 400 people, you know, you have a, a... I mean, maybe it was a massive condor or something. I'm trying to think of things that would have been around back then. There's like nothing, man, that would not behave that's that the way that they Not with light like, coming out of a horn the, in the middle of its Not head, coming yeah. out with the fucking mines and going down to terrorize the village and then fucking back off That the is mines, some like. cool shit, though, isn't it? It's class. Even that idea. It's class. Fire like, dragons, man. Fire dragons coming out of it like it's kind of crap if they were just you know maybe they were immature and they could only create light from their horns rather than fire attacks you know um Mm -hmm. but anyway once the mile was sealed the mysterious appearances of the van meter monster stopped and the town returned to normal however the story of the monster and its strange connection to the abandoned mine continued to linger in local folklore some speculate that the mines may have been the creature's hiding place all along, perhaps even housing a small colony of these unknown Ooh. beings. Um, the fact that the sighting ceased after the mine was sealed deepens the mystery, but also adds to that. Oh. To this day, the coal mine remains an integral part of the legend with cryptozoologists and paranormal enthusiasts theorizing about what may have happened to the creatures inside. There's never been any physical evidence of the Van Meter monster, but the stories of what happened at the mine have cemented the creature's place in Iowa's cryptozoological lore, Mm. and many people believe that something truly strange did occur on those nights in 1903, though the true nature of the creature or the creatures remains unexplained. Mm, It reminds me of the story we did again, we're getting back into the territory of happened so long ago I can't remember. The devil in California, you know, that little dinosaur kind of cryptid that was kind of half dinosaur, half... I, I It's a long time ago now, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're probably drawing a blank because yeah, it's I, like... Yeah, I like usually something yeah, sparks with it me. Was like, it was one of them ones that had a bit of a folklore, but it was like a small little devil-y, demon-y thing, but it, it was said to resemble a dinosaur. A lot of people were kind of like, is it a raptor or something like it? Uh, it, it was in... Oh, fuck, I can't even remember. I'll pull it up, though. I'll, I'll find it after Dude, this. Yeah, because I'm, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I'm sure as soon as you say it, I'll be like, I remember the rope, and I remember McKelly and Ben Ben. It wasn't really what you would call a true dinosaur cryptid, but it had some accounts that were, like, describing it as something similar to a dinosaur. Yeah. So Not around the Pine Barrens, was it? Or no, that's kind of no. Jersey Devil. Yeah, area, not isn't it? other side. Yeah. So it, was, it was over California. I'll pull it up after this, and we'll, we'll get the name, because mm. I can't even fucking remember myself. So, modern sightings. We're going on to modern mm-hmm. sightings. In 2005, the witness named, a witness named Megan saw a dragon in Burlington, Iowa. She said that it was a 10-foot-long snake. It looked like a monster and it was flying overhead. A snake-looking monster, rather. It was in the middle of the night and Megan and her husband were driving home. They said that it had bat-like wings and a seahorse's head. Mm. Spooky. Now, have you ever seen... They, they've they've said that it was Mothman once or twice. Mm. It's basically a bird flying that's captured a snake. Oh, and right. the way that it flies against the wind yeah, or whatever, and the way that the right. snake moves, it looks like Mothman. Like yeah, it looks yeah. like, or maybe looks like this dragon, yeah. uh, the Van Meter. The silhouette. Visitor. The silhouette, yeah. It's got a silhouette, like its eggs are, uh, its its legs are coming out, or wings. Sorry, are coming out like the, these antlers here, and then the body of the bird is there. And then it's holding a snake that's dangling down mm. with the rest of its so body. So it looks like this. So it's got this kind of, bodies, of yeah, yeah, three-pronged looking figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, exactly. Yeah, but that's interesting actually. Because you wonder, could it be, especially if it's 10 feet long, 
you could have yeah. a, a bird of prey yeah. that captured a snake yeah. that would be about 10 foot long, top to tail, with the snake, you know? I really like that shit. Like, I actually really like that as an explanation. I really like when, like, a cryptid is successfully debunked because mm. what it means is that, for it means a couple of things. People, like, get upset about it or whatever, but no, it means that a bunch of people did see something. They haven't yeah, lost yeah, their fucking yeah. mind. They're not trying to bullshit. They've seen something fucking strange. They're sincerely reporting what they've seen. Mm. It looked unusual, blah, blah, blah. And it just so happens that there was a perfectly logical explanation. So what is cool about that is that you know that there's a bunch of sincere people reporting what they see yeah. at that time, which I think is great because, yeah, because, like, I think you can be skeptical. Because for the ones that they can't yeah. debunk. There's yeah. an, a percentage at yeah. least of people that are because you could be report, skeptical yeah. and, and just rubbish everyone talking shit and go ah yeah you, know you see what I mean? the thing so. is again we talked about it with the skeptics before like when you're part of a skeptic society yeah, yeah. or you're known for being a skeptical yeah. or being a skeptic rather you may as well just be like pro Bigfoot yeah, yeah. like we can't fully take anything no. you say at face value because yeah. your agenda is there yeah. but if you're just a dude who's driving home and he goes I saw yeah. what looked like a gorilla yeah in the woods uh-huh. you know then you know he's just a guy who's telling a story because yeah. yeah. no everyone knows you're not going to make any money off this no. you're probably going to be ridiculed but it must as well and you see it a lot on uh podcasts like Sask- sasquatch chronicles mm. the a lot of these people they really have a hard time getting their mental health back after yeah, they yeah. see this because the way that they describe it seeing a thing that shouldn't be real uh-huh. And knowing that the vast majority of people won't believe them. Uh-huh. And the fear that they feel when they see it. Like a lot of guys, you hear them on the podcast and they're kind of not breaking down, but like they're being effects. emotional. Yeah, effectively. Weedabix <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Fill in their underpants full of wagon wheels. Fill in their underpants full of wagon wheels. Uh, stacking yeah. it up in there like. Uh, <laughs> <Not> me, mama. <laughs> um, no, for sure. Look. It, it's crazy when you think about the volume of it really is now don't get me wrong there's definitely an ecosystem of fucking shysters out there as oh, well yeah but anything but like this like hucksters holistic <laughs> stuff as well there's people who are gonna have great uh, yeah. great results maybe doing some sort of holistic therapies and whether that's uh, placebo or uh, whatever it's working for them then there's a load of lads going oh look at these crystals yeah. hanging out of me fanny yeah. and they're like they're not yeah. you know what i mean they're just no, talking no. shy right so we had the seahorse sighting in the early 2000s a local family driving their van meter reported seeing a strange creature lying on the side of the road this sighting was notable because the creature was described as bat like very large and seemingly injured or at rest the family slowed down to get a better look but they were unnerved by its unusual size and form as you would be initially they didn't stop but their curiosity got the best of them and they decided to turn around and investigate further like a good cryptozoologist However, when they returned to the spot, the creature had gone. This encounter drew comparisons to the Van Meter monster due to similarities in appearance, uh, the bat-like wings and its unusual size. That was a big part of it. Despite the lack of physical evidence, this incident reignited discussions about the possibility of a large cryptid creature still existing in or around Van Meter. So in 2006, there was a local pastor who had a strange experience that also echoed the original Van Meter monster story. According to the report, while out driving in the early evening, he noticed a dragon-like figure in the sky. The creature was described as flying in a somewhat unnatural manner, resembling a large winged reptile with a bulky form. Its silhouette and behaviour led the pastor to believe, Pasta, why are you gay? To believe it was not a typical bird or any known animal. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Your reference. <laughs> Pasta. Why are you gay? Pasta, Who said please. I am gay? <laughs> Pasta, please. Pasta, please. <laughs> Um, what well, remember I made you watch that full <laughs> we watched like 40 minutes of it in Wales yeah that was good fun <laughs> what well, made the sighting particularly intriguing <laughs> who is gay you are gay who said I am gay what is a lesbian uh, what made this sighting particularly intriguing is that upon further research the pastor discovered that his description of the creature matched the van meter monster he was not previously familiar with the legend this is always interesting yeah which added to the element of authenticity as we say the van meter monster which was described in 1903 is said to have had bat like wings a horned head that emitted light and an otherworldly presence which aligned with pasta's report Pasta. pasta please pasta please um so then uh i suppose 
first what we'll do before we get into it is sighting or shiting? I think they cited something. I think something probably happened back then. Right. Uh, I don't know what it was. And it's just been carried through the... It'd be cool, you know, if we had a bit more time that maybe you'd look into... Is there any native stories from around Iowa of, like, Thunderbirds or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool if you were doing the notes, like... <laughs> cool! <laughs> like, realistically, all you'd really say, all you'd really do is be like, yeah, the native lads said there were Thunderbirds there. So, yeah, for you listeners I mean? that are wondering, it, yeah, they did. They just did. They just did. Yeah. Sure, they thought about Thunderbirds all the time. They're always thinking about Thunderbirds. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for the insight. Thunderbirds. Oh, <laughs> Big, big f- um, flying birds. Sighting or shiting? Uh, I'd say it's a shite. Oh. Sorry, I'd say it's a... That was a Freudian oh, slip. Nice. I'd say it's a shiting. I'd say they saw something. I don't know if it was a dragon that emitted bright light from its horn. But what could it be then? Only a dragon, a dragon that could emit bright light from its <laughs> horn when you put it that way. Company. Yeah, that's true. What could you misconstrue it as? Um, because that's what my brain is doing. My brain is trying to deconstruct what it could mm. possibly be, and unless like some kind of fucking eagle managed fox. to get a lantern a around its head with a with a, they didn't even have torches back then. No, like a lantern, like a, yeah. an eagle would have had to have flown through a kerosene lamp and flown off an while eagle, on fire. An eagle with like white blinding light yeah, shooting out of its head happen. is pretty American. It is. That's it's very cool. American, actually. It's very American. Who are you voting for? <laughs> Oh, Trump. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not voting for anyone, man. King of Sound, President of Sound, that's who I'm voting for. Who's the President of Sound? So either you or me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kamala. It's probably me now. Probably. That would is. I don't know. It's hard to know. If only they knew the true you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this facade listen her, that listen you her now, buddy. Um, listen her now. Yeah. I think that if Kamala or Trump used Why are we talking the Van about Meter visit. All right. As their emblem for democracy and right. freedom and liberty, that uh, would get the swing. I think it gets very are you, are close. You a, I would, I would stage. bring in a dragon that emit, <laughs> emits light as the new representative. Campaign poster. This should be, be the campaign poster. Should be one of them riding that animal. Yeah, with yeah. with a the fate no more song. Flying yeah, yeah. on the wings of an yeah, eagle. Yeah. That'd be um, pretty cool. To get back to the owl creature. Um, uh, <laughs> I'd rather talk about this garbage <laughs> we're talking about now. Um, no, I think, look, it, it can't be anything logical because logic is out the window, folks. Out the window. So, what we need to do is we need to deconstruct. A flying creature emitting its own light. We need to figure it out. It's impossible. You know, this is the part of the cryptid TV show where it shows me an aim in front of the laptop and fucking mm. all blueprint looking shit come <laughs> up. And what we figure out is um, that. Is it mass hallucination, dare I say? Is there a bit of, a, is something coming out with the mind then? Radon? I'm upset. Carbon could be, monoxide? Could be, yeah, ley lines. Uh, I'm upset with mass hallucination as yeah. an explanation. Yeah, you hate that. I hate explanation on mass hallucination. Hate mass hallucination. I'd rather just play my sure, whatever. fucking PlayStation. Sure. What's this head, Ivan? They're, they're mining, right? Look at all these towns that fall That's under true, the fucking yeah. mines. They're inhaling cobalt. Like, what if they fucking hit some high. dodgy shit and it's mm. releasing up through the rock? You know? What's more likely, that they would hit dodgy shit that would release the rock? Yeah. Or that a dragon a being dragon would emerge from the dragon is more mine. likely, I would Dragon's say. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mass hallucination. It's a mad one, though, isn't it? Because, like... Whether it's the dancing plague or the Salem witch trials where you have that, yeah. regret, that's kind of being blamed for that. We haven't done that yet either, by the way. Did we not do Salem? No. How many years us. are we at this? Yeah, yeah. Remember we did a Werewolf? That was like Salem, but with Werewolf. We haven't done Dracula. That was before we knew about Dracula. I haven't Dogma. done Dracula. Uh, he's I haven't not, done, he's I haven't done he's really a, tra- a proper shown. vampire episode. I haven't covered no. vampires properly at yeah, all. Yeah, but I did six hours of that with Gordo, so... <laughs> and of those better. six hours, 12 were recorded, and I was going around the place, like... I was going around like Andy <laughs> Joshua, like, after getting, after getting took out of it. Face down, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> Sean Connery. Um, Sometimes you got to give a little slap. Uh, no, I get you about the Masters. I'm with you, but... Mm. It's very easy. Well, one thing I will say, all right, Let's say we're all in room loads of us, right? And mm. we're all on shrooms. One of well, us then, go, one, yeah. no, no, no. But one of us gets up into the middle of the room and goes, "There's a fucking bright, like there's a big mad thing in the room with wings." Now, mm. probably fifty percent would go, "Yeah, man, I see that too." It's possible, yeah. So if 
there is something like poison water. I did. I did a poison water. I did a, a a quest in Kingdom Come Deliverance where I had to go to a town that were they were affected by some random plague, right? And I had to go around cataloging water. their symptoms, and then I had to go to their brother and get him to make me medicine, right? Um, but it, they had mass poisoning. Mm. I think they did anyway. If they didn't, they're all going to die. In That's a part town of the quest. Four hundred, yeah. So, like, was there something in the water? Could be, yeah, could be. A bit of fucking that was dysentery. causing them to hallucinate. Like, well, there's enough fucking bullshit in the water supply in Wexford yeah, every yeah. other week. You think we'd be going around seeing dog men and cats? Well, we kind of do. That. We sort are of. an odd county, yeah, um, strange county. Yeah, I think, like, do you know what? Uh, it's a really weird one. This one, mm, it's bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre because it is like it's like a Power Rangers monster. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, it's a really specific. There's nothing monster. like it's like the New Jersey Devil, the Jersey mm. Devil. Sorry, where it's like, but the Jersey Devil has like because the Jersey Jersey Devil has those uh, sort of satanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like Loftus Hall almost. There's yeah. a little yeah, bit of that. It's with got the, a little bit of that. Whereas Jersey this Devil is story. just a Power Rangers monster a hundred years before Power Rangers comes out. Yeah, which is kind of bizarre. Yeah, because there's there is literally back then before electricity properly was taken off and all that. Like, there's nothing that you could yeah say that would sh- like especially the li- if if it like was without light the light part. Thing. I think we could say loads of different things. Yeah, yeah. But that's the, the horn emitting up. light. That's now it could just be where time traveling dragon. Oh, that's class. You know what I mean? Now I'll offer you a theory here. This is probably the truth. This is probably the real theory like for it. all of our listeners. I like it. So. Let me paint a picture, if you will. Humanity, we die out. Climate change, all that shit, you know. Mm -hmm. Too many McDonald's and all that. Yeah. Die. Makes sense. Then, birds are back. Dinosaurs are back. Okay. Right. They're evolving then in their own special They they come back, they fill in the niche that we leave. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh yeah, cool, we'll evolve back into raptors and all that kind of cool shit. Eventually, over time, you start to get human dinosaurs, like humanoid dinosaurs that are intelligent. This is when they started to develop the time traveling, you know. Mm. Now one of them has gone to Halfords and he's got one of them headlamps. Yeah. For when he goes yeah. through the portal in case it's dark. Yeah. He comes through. He's like his dad's a pterodactyl, his ma's a raptor. Mm. He's got a bit of both of them. But he, he doesn't have opposable thumbs, so he can't code. No. So doing the science is very difficult. Yeah. So he comes through, he fucks up his time frame, he comes back when humans are around, he wasn't meant to. And now he takes an extra drop of the serum <laughs> that brings you back, and it brings him back yeah. an extra. He was actually supposed to go further back. He was going to go back to study the original dinosaurs. He was going to educate the dinosaurs yeah, yeah, yeah. so that they would be able to survive. Yeah, exactly. His make events, exactly. of course. Yeah. So now he comes out. He's like, "What the fuck? Where am I in this saloon? I'm fucking, what yeah. the fuck is going on here?" And next thing, everyone's just shooting at him because it's America. So they're all just shooting at him. And he's like, what the fuck, lads? I come in peace. I just want to figure out what's going on. You know what it is? And then the horn of light is when he tries to describe. That's how what connects him with the people of the future. This is Halford's fucking headlight. It it was, but then I (laughs) retroconned it. So so I think that's when he uses his telepathy to speak to his family in the future. Uh, Uh, That's how you know, because the golden horn uh, glows. uh, And that's how you know the landline like don't fucking uh, use the phone the internet's uh, on yeah. you know that's he was getting back to his homies mm. that to get down into the mine to the time machine you know there's definitely a film Is the back to the future did they want to do a mine at some point something Probably. like that Probably. there's always stuff to do with mines mines are good out of out of Vogue lately people did like mines there you had uh, Con Air featured a mine was there a mine in Con Air was it Con Air Broken Arrow sorry Broken Arrow same film Broken a Christian Slater I believe great film Broken I Arrow I don't class, think I've ever seen Broken Arrow I oh, saw an ad you for, seen Broken I saw Arrow? a poster for Broken Arrow and I thought it looked class oh, there's like a class. mad plane in it and all isn't there yeah I think Whereas so Con Air has like just a normal plane Broken Arrow is like uh, I think a Broken Arrow is like American for like they've, sta- they've taken a nuclear warhead Broken and, Arrow uh, yeah they're Want to do some kind of mad shit? Uh, no, it's re- that's a really good film. Broken I Arrow. must check it out. Pure yeah. 90s class, yeah. It's just, is it Christian Slater and John Travolta? Maybe I know, is John Christian Travolta Slater is in it? I or is my granddad called him John Rivalto? Search Connor and see if Rivalto's in it. Uh, John Rivalto, Broken Arrow, Broken Arrow, Broken sorry, Arrow, not Connor, yeah. film, yeah. I think I've probably seen them films like the same week when I was about 10. So they're just, like, like, they're yeah, just the they same. Thing. Face Off is the same film as well. Broken Arrow 1950. What? No. Yeah, yeah. Here's a picture of John Travolta. Yeah, yeah. It? John Travolta is in it. John Travolta. <laughs> John Revolta. You can get it on Blu ray, man. Yeah, that's what you want. Laser disc. 
We should watch that sometime. Jack, Broken Arrow. I can't Major believe Vic you Deacons seen it. hold the U.S. government to ransom by stealing a nuclear warhead and threatening believe. to detonate it in a major sister, sissy, city. <laughs> I can't good. believe you haven't seen that. Or maybe I have seen no, it. I, I, know, I know. You'd about remember. It. You'd remember. No, you haven't. Who's and is Christian Slater a good lad? Yeah, yeah. John Revolta's bad. John Revolta. <laughs> oh, John Woo directed it. John Woo, man. John Woo. Class. Woo, 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 you woo, know woo, it. Woo, woo. Uh, he did. Is this what he did before Face Off or after Face Off? It was around the same time. Face Off. John Revolta. John Revolta. He loves um, John Revolta. Face Off is class. If you like, so now I'm going to offer you our version of the movie. Revolta was hiding the nuclear warhead in a mine shaft, I believe. was mm. what the, Or maybe they were putting the warhead in the in mine the shaft mine so shafts. they could detonate it. Yeah. Spider alert. Cool. Um, they bring the warhead down there to detonate it. Family the monsters there. erupt out of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Godzilla then. Yeah. You know. And then do the... But then the monsters disagree. One of them thinks that John Revolta is right. He's like, humanity, they are destroying the planet. They will only create pestilence and pollution to kill everyone. And the other dragon's like, but their creativity. I've seen them do such wonderful things and their capacity for love. And then the two dragons are like against each other. Yeah, Revolta so Christian Slater and is on one of them yeah. and Revolta is on oh, the other. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking class movie, man. Their capacity for creativity. Sometimes they just talk to each other and record it and other people really appreciate this endeavor <laughs> the other's like no they are they are they are their server farms they're they're getting rid of the oil for the energy and the electricity grid for the server farms um yeah i think that's what should happen in that I, why has no one made movies like this why can't people just look how quickly we made a f- class movie it's just effortless. broken arrow 2 it's effortless for us john revolta john revolta um we get davy the snail to do a cameo <laughs> um no look. davy get back <laughs> david the snail dies in like an altruistic <laughs> death where he tries to say no davy <laughs> the, the bad dragon is like i don't want to do this davy <laughs> But he like blasts a laser beam at him through his horn. <laughs> Dave, as Davey Julie dies, it just goes, someone finds his headphones, the last shot, like as he gets blasted, thing, and in the headphones, he just hears, like, No, what no, no, no cry. cry. But he'll be 40. Uh, yeah, look, that's one of the more bizarre cryptids we've covered. Mm. I don't have an answer. I don't, I will never have an answer. The Van Meter monster will stay with me forever until it doesn't. But. <laughs> Which will be. Roughly two to three hours from there. <laughs> no, I need to find the name of that devil. Is the is the oh, what's the name of that creature? We need to figure it out, Emma, on the podcast here because the it's um you know our brains. Is it an are, Australian one or is it a American, American one? America. Our, our brains are disintegrating. America. They're turning to wet cake. You see what yeah. it is, listeners? Is our genius brains. We can only to push out old stuff to me. How could we make Broken Arrow 2, The Tale of Two we Dragons? We lost two old episodes and we just made that film yeah. there to just go off our brand. And now that's going to be pushed out at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Revolta, I wonder <laughs> if he feels like, I feel like I haven't been in a blockbuster for many years, but Re- I have the inklings of the perfect movie. Revol- Revolta, I'd say, would be into it. John Revolta. John Redondo. <laughs> Uh, oh, I found this. Thank fuck for that. I thought what he was having a fucking fever dream. The Lone Pine Mountain Devil. Ah, uh, yeah. That's why pine. That's why the pine yeah, barrens go, came into my head. Bit. See, their brains are desperately struggling to keep up with their genius. It's, uh, it's tough, man. But there you go. That's another early set, le- settler story. So if you're new to the pod, God help you if you're this far into it. But if you are new to the pod, the Lone Pine Mountain Devil has a lot in. Uh, relation to this one in a sense in in that it's a weird it's described as this weird thing that you're like "Mm, that doesn't really resemble anything because that was one of them ones when I was doing research if I remember correctly where I was like oh this sounds like another dinosaur cryptid that's kind of cool do you know what we need more of dinosaur cryptids no people having sightings of dinosaur ghosts yeah, because yeah. people see old dogs. That's and true, cats and shit. Why aren't you like? Why aren't you just in bed with like, a giant T Rex and ethereal T Rex just like puts its head into your window? Yeah. Whoopsie. That, I suppose that runs into the like. 
if, souls. Yeah. Yeah. That the dumbass that was the, that that was the easiest one to, to oh. I know, yeah, that's what I was thinking, but like wouldn't it be cool to see like the ghost? Oh I'm Exactly. What about surely one dinosaur? Maybe as it became intelligent, there was one dinosaur. There was. We're going to do an episode on that. There was Trudon. There's like a fringe fringe theory that Trudon evolved to be like almost humanoid. Trudon. Yeah, Trudon. What's T R O O D O N? It's a dinosaur species. Yeah, it's a dinosaur species. Is it like <laughs> bipedal or? Uh, yeah, it's like it's, it's kind of built like a bit of a raptor, you know. But there's fringe theories that it it. That it theoretically could have had a human sized brain and stuff like that and uh, that it could be kind of hominid I want it to be able to yeah, talk yeah. no we must not go there that is where the pterodactyl's territory is isn't it like imagine if they went into the fossil record and they found like a dinosaur city you'd be like oh my god what what is going on like <laughs> to be fair the way things have been going for the past number of years a dino city would just where there's real dinosaurs still there well, that'd be amazing. Stop Spliced with now human we, beings. Now we're talking. And that's what Bigfoot is. Bigfoot is gigantic. He's, he's a scout. Them. Yeah, yeah. You must go to the forest, <laughs> Gigantopithecus. They are calling me the Sasquatch. No, you are Gigantopithecus. <laughs> I want to be the Sasquatch. <laughs> and that's where all of the dinosaurs are. He's like, that's is where wolves, he hangs out with the humans. They're like, and he's like, yeah. I'm a Sasquatch. I'm a they Sasquatch call me now. Sasquatch. He's like working in an office by the end. Of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I'm all in. I'm all in for that dinosaur city, man. They need to find that. But archaeologists, what the fuck are you doing? If there's any archaeologists listen to this podcast, get out and fucking dig it a must dinosaur be really, city. Like, find if it. you're inspired by Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider or Nathan Drake or whatever, mm. to like to become an archaeologist, only to realize, oh, this is just landscaping. This is a lot that's of soil. What, that's what stopped me. I mm. like fairly quickly realized, like, I was like, oh, I'm going to be in like. Galway yeah. digging up a, a, a pebble Viking cobble street I'm like that's cool and all but I want to yeah. find dinosaur cities yeah you need so. to go to Latin America <laughs> you should have gone like Dora the Explorer yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob the Rambler you yeah, yeah, just no. gone around. it sank my hopes and dreams really I'm not interested yeah. in a fucking bangle that's it's a very, contour it's very, that's a true fucking, oh look at this brooch from I'll Tara fuck about a bangle. you'll be like where's fuck the about a bangle? give me a dinosaur skull mm. I don't care about a bangle could there was there any dinosaur at all now in Ireland? Loads, any? yeah, loads. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any good ones? Uh, Trudon or what his name? Trudon. I, I don't know whether Trudon was there. There are there are fossils here, I think. Um, yeah, there's fossils in the UK too. I think we're like we share that kind of. But we don't have class dinosaurs. <sighs> I don't think there's like, been truly class dinosaurs. Like Allosaurus ever like, popped down here and was like, I don't know. Hi, Alan Saurus. <laughs> <here. laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> no. I don't know. But all I know is that we need more dinosaurs. We need more dinosaur cryptids, and we need more dinosaurs in our lives, just in general. We need to have dinosaur skin to allow us to be resilient enough to deal with the difficulties of life mm. we also need to have dinosaur hearts heart to allow us to big. open up and be vulnerable to one another can one care as much as a dinosaur can who knows because that a big enough heart for it man giant massive hearts mm. aorta I, everywhere I, I would you rather would you rather go up to a base on mars right and spend a week or would you rather go in a time machine back second to dinosaurs one, one, yeah. yeah i think i'd say Fucking base on Mars, you'd be bored out of your mind there. Yeah, like yeah, I don't oh, look. It's I, like living in a concrete desert. I'm trying. To, I'm shows. trying to kind of come up with like a space equivalent that would be cool. But like, would you like spend a week with the aliens in their <laughs> homeland? That's hard now. Yeah, that is hard now. You probably would question. like to be with the aliens because you could. You would assume you could communicate with them and learn things. Uh, whereas the dinosaurs, you'd be like, I want dinosaurs. Yeah, fuck the aliens. Dinosaurs would be class, but you'd also have to like be quiet unless they had like cool um people even though yeah. i know they probably didn't exist at the same time but they were in line plots and all and they like and then you'd fall in love with like the daughter of the king or whatever mm. and he'd be like no you must not go with the man or whatever and Get some have, Zenosi. <laughs> Zenosi, nice uh but you know what i mean that then that would be a fun thing otherwise you're just kind of in the hedges hoping something doesn't eat you well i'll try a curveball what if dinosaurs on art war aliens didn't think about that, did you? You never cease to amaze <laughs> me. You never cease to amaze me, Rob, with these such what if, innovative. What if, what if the what if <laughs> what so if innovator of thought? Get this. What if dinosaurs? Right, it's like kind of a Prometheus scenario, but like they they were like going extinct on Mars, and they're like shit. We need to get in in, in spaceships. Come here. 
their spaceship crashed, they lost all their knowledge, and then they just turned into stupid ass dinosaurs. Mm. They were the true alien species. What if like they were massively uh, intelligent, but then they created something called social media? Yeah, and over time up. they got polarized. Who knows? In populists <laughs> in the great in the great uh, elections. We have to find the dinosaur city to get the answers. I think we will find a dinosaur city. Because like di- birds are smart, like so. For listeners that don't realize, yeah. birds are direct descendants and of dinosaurs. Raptors are like so. You know what I mean? Like a magpie. A magpie would probably do better at maths than me, maybe, given the training. Like, magpies are intelligent. Like, How long do you think it would take you to figure out to put pebbles into a <laughs> pipe of water to make the water level rise versus a crow? Because a crow does it in, like, pretty quick. When I'm, like, 12, like, if I'm 12 mm. versus a magpie or a crow. If you think about the gone. age of crows, right? A crow is going to figure, like, they figure it out really my long. niece is, like, five. Crow she won't be shit out of your niece. Ah, break, break her up. Yeah, yeah like, the, be they'd actually be laughing at her. Crowing. And they'd be smarter. Hmm. Which is funny to think a crow, about. They but do it's true. reckon that a crow does have the like intelligence of a, an adolescent, isn't it? Yeah. Something so what like I'm that? saying is like, who knows what kind of looks a dinosaur give you back then? Do you know what I mean? You might get some cool, interesting shit happening. Like they might be up to some interesting shit. Mm. Do you know that we just have no idea about? There's so much we don't know about dinosaurs, I Emin. Mean, we need to find out. We need to find the dino city. We need to get the fuck out of here. Is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll leave it there, folks. The van meter monster and also dinosaur talk. Mm. I've been Rob. I've been Eamon. Tune in, find out, Masterfuls Podcast, over and out. <laughs> <laughs>